you doing? You know what today is? I forgot. It's time for another big data, big question. So today I wanted to tackle another AI concept or deep learning concept. Some of the things that we've started talking about a little bit on this channel, just to, hey, I think these are big, important topics that data engineers and data scientists need to start learning. So whether, you know, whether you're in that role right now, whether it's something you're aspiring to be, or whether you just want to be able to have intelligent conversations, I thought it would be good for me to start sharing some of these topics as I'm learning them so that you can start understanding them because I think these are going to be really big areas of technology for the next two to five years for sure. Um, so it's a, it's a huge, huge market. There's a huge need for people with skills in deep learning and machine learning, and that, that's only going to grow. So today I'm going to cover a concept called AI winner. And so when I first heard it, I was like, AI winner. I was like, I don't, I don't really understand what this, what this topic means, but so I was like, oh, let me let me dig in and let me find out a little bit more about it. So I figure if I didn't understand it, that maybe other people that are watching this channel didn't understand it too. So let's kind of walk through and talk about it together. So we'll find out more about AI Winner after this. Welcome back. So before we jump into AI winter and we're going to cover it and it does not involve snow. But before we do that, I want to encourage you to ask any questions that you have. Maybe it be deep learning, AI related, data engineering, machine learning, or any kind of tech questions. Any questions that you have, let's learn it together and put it in the comment section here below. See how we can, as a community, start to learn some of these topics together. So any questions, put them in the comment section here below. Also, if you don't want to put them in the comment section here below, maybe you have a, you know, a question that you just wanted to ask me personally, send it over. So thomashenson.com forward slash big questions. Those will come right into my inbox. I'll get to it and I'll try to answer it as quickly as I can. I will say I'm just a one person show right now. So um, just be patient with me. And I really appreciate the support and I appreciate the questions that are coming in because it helps with us all kind of learning these new concepts. So today's question comes in around AI winner. And so, like I said, this is a topic in deep learning that um, I've really started getting into. So the last, I'd say six months, probably lo a little bit longer than six months, maybe the last year, I've really started looking into deep learning like TensorFlow and Cafe and some of the, some of the frameworks there, but also some of these concepts too. One of the concepts that uh, I kind of struggled with at first, I won't say struggled with, I just didn't understand it, was around AI winner. So AI winner is a concept for, okay, AI has been around since, you know, I'd say the at least the early 50s, maybe the 60s. So if you think about it, you know, some of the classic examples that we did were we would we would train a computer to be able to beat another person in chess. So can can a computer beat, you know, beat the best world's chess player in in chess? And so, you know, if you remember that was, you know, back in the 50s or 60s, I don't really remember, but we've all seen the research, right? Um, and so we've seen that as a classic example there. But so if AI has been around that long, how come, how come, you know, how come we're not having flying cars? Or if you remember, um, there's a new series on Netflix called Lost in Space. It's actually a reboot um, of a series before. Like, how come we don't have a robot that can walk around, right? I mean, we, we, we thought about this back in the, back in the, I guess, the 60s and 70s with, with that TV series. Like, how come if we've had AI this long, have we not been there? And so... This is where the concept of AI winter comes in. So what we say is we have these summers, so we have these warm periods of time where we're really hot and we're really excited about all the things that AI is gonna be able to do. And it kind of it kind of falters down. So you know, you think about it, think think about the hype cycle of it, think about just the technology or the funding that goes into it. And so it really never comes to fruition, right? So we, you know, after we beat the first, you know, after the machine was able to beat the first person in chess. Go back and look at some of the news articles. People are like, oh man, you know, AI's, you know, AI is going to take over the world. It's going to replace jobs. We're going to have robots. I mean, this was all in the 60s. Uh, it didn't happen, right? We, we still, we still, we still don't have robots. I mean, I have a robot vacuum cleaner, which is really cool, but I mean, that's only came out recently, right? That, that didn't come out in the 60s or 70s. And so AI winter are these cooling periods where, hey, the technology is not there. You know, maybe we overstated what was going to happen from AI you know, so you, you have these cycles and then the cycle will come back up then. So then maybe in the seventies and eighties, people get really excited about some of the technology and some of the things that are going to happen. And AI has this resurgence. And so this has happened, um, since the 1960s, but the key is, and so the AI winter is that cooling period where there's, where there's a hype cycle. So the key is 
are we going to have another AI? You know, is this just another hype cycle? Most people are going to say that there's two reasons for it. I'm going to put in my own third reason, but the big, the, the big one is, so since, you know, I'd say since the early to mid 2000s, we've been on this resurgence. So it's, we've been in this AI summer. I don't believe we're going to have another AI winner. Most analysts don't believe we are either. The two reasons that they think is, first off, what do you need to be able to do big data? We've talked about it here. What do you need to be able to do deep learning? You need to have lots of data. The more data you have, the more likely you are to have a better model. So now with all the digitization of all the, you know, everything on the on the planet, everything has a digital signature versus, you know, we're tracking paper or do, doing other pieces, right? Everything you do, you know, whether it be a transaction with your bank, whether it be a social media post, I mean, there is so much data available. Part of the reason that data is doubling every two years is because of this digitization of data. So deep learning, AI, you know, big data, all the things we talk about, the more data, the more opportunities you have to be successful. Concept number two, the reason, the cost of compute. So the continuation of Moore's law has given us the ability to be able to do all these processing, right? To do, to be able to go out and be able to, you know, test out all this data. So maybe test out 10 terabytes of data for something that may or may not work. That's a key too, right? Like if, if you knew it was gonna give you what you wanted, then, you know, it, it, it'd be a little bit easier to invest. But now that that cost of compute has given us the ability to, hey, we can try out, you know, 10 terabytes of data. And then the cost for that is nominal versus, you know, if we looked at 20 years ago to be able to run 10 terabytes of data or even find 10 terabytes of data. So maybe you find the 10 terabytes of data, you store the data, and then now you want to process it through for something that may or may not work, right? Because it's going to take, it's an iterative process, right? We want to fail fast and understand you know, is this is this model going to be able to predict? So think about like driverless cars, right? Is this going to help us make an you know an automated car system? Well, you have to fail a lot of times, right? And you have to take in lots of, lots of amounts of data. Well, I mean, we haven't been able to do that until here recently, just with the cost. So the continuation of Moore's law. So those are the two those are the two reasons that the analysts believe. So they you know the digitization, so the amount vast amounts of data that we have, and then also the cost of compute. My point, so I think there's a third point and I believe it's open source software. I believe the world has become, you know, we've continued to build open source projects and these open source projects are just building upon each other. And I believe that the proliferation of those are helping us all collectively create better algorithms, create better uh, data models. And it's just, I mean, it's, it's helping AI be in vogue for, I mean, look at, look at just the sheer number of people that are citizen data scientists that, you know, are, are working on stuff like, you know, data science projects, you know, Kaggle competitions, all on the side, right? I mean, we're, we're teaching people that don't have a background, maybe don't don't have a, for sure don't have a PhD, or maybe even a master's degree, or maybe they don't even have a bachelor's degree, or maybe their bachelor's degree was in something that wasn't technology related or math related. Like, there's so many people that are trying, they're doing things out here. And part of the reason is because of open source data. So my key is, I believe, proliferation of data, so the ability to train these models with amazingly large data sets that scale, the cost of compute, right? The continuation of Moore's law gives us the ability and then the proliferation of open source projects. So, so many different ways that we can analyze data and we're all kind of doing it, you know, on the planet together and, you know, where, you know, I might be working on a project here in Alabama and then somebody, you know, on the other side of the world is also able to contribute it, contribute to that open source project too. And we're just making better software that gives us the ability to analyze these data sets and make better models. So that's what AI Winter is. That's kind of where we see AI Winter not going. Personally, I don't think, you know, I don't think we're gonna sunset. I'd like to know what you guys think. So the analysts believe, you know, most of the analysts believe we're not gonna we're not gonna have a sunset on it. I don't believe we are. Do you folks think that we're going to have another AI winner? Is it going to be, is, you know, are we, are we going to sunset on this hype cycle? You know, or am I not going to get my robot? So uh, tell me more in the comment section here below. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. And I will see you next time on Big Data, Big Question.